Hello everyone! This is my first ever Unity tutorial and I will teach you how to create your own dialogue system. I will divide this tutorial into various videos uploaded weekly. I'll teach you how to import your dialogue from a simple to read and write format into Unity and print it in a dialogue box, how to implement options in dialogue branches and how to add special functions such as voice acting, animation triggered by dialogue, etc. Although dialogue systems can be extremely different from one another in terms of specifications, I hope I can cover the basics to make you understand how it works and how to construct above it. In the footage below, you can see an example of the dialogue system I created for my first indie game called Into a Dream. Before getting into Unity, let me tell you the choices I have made in terms of formats and plugins. The dialogues are going to be written in YAML, which is a very straightforward format convertible into JSON and XML, for example. You can check its specifications in yaml.org if you're not familiar with it. As I couldn't find any YAML parser that worked correctly with the dialogue writing construction I had in mind, I opted to convert the YAML formats into JSON, which can be done very simply and fast in the web, or by getting a Python script that makes such a conversion. I'll guide you through the process in later videos. The JSON files are then parsed to Unity using the litjson plugin. You can download the latest version in litjson.net and copy the litjson folder into your project's assets folder. Finally, it is important to understand that the YAML structure I am using for dialogue writing and how litjson parses the corresponding JSON. Ok, so a linear dialogue, that is, that has no branching, is simply written like this, hyphen, the speaker's name, followed by the spoken line. You can repeat this for how many lines you want and how many speakers you want. Inside Unity, litjson parses this dialog into a specific data type named JSON data. If we store our file into a JSON data variable called dialog, its first element, dialog0, will represent our first whole line, dialog1 our second line, and so on. The catch here is that these lines cannot be converted to strings and are comprised of a key and another element. We'll get into how to access the key while coding, but we have access to the spoken line by getting the first element of our whole line. That is, dialog 0, 0 is going to be our line 1, dialog 1, 0 is going to be our line 2, and so on as you can see in our example here. Ok, so here we are in Unity. So for now I have already a setup scene that is basically has a camera and a couple of images, so nothing else. Uh, my idea is to place the dialogue for now right about here. We'll get to that in a couple of, of, of minutes. So first of all, just want to, to show you that I have already placed the litjson plugin inside my assets folder and I have also created a dialogues folder that I have placed inside resources. Um, I generally organize my folders by scene and inside each scene I have a JSON and a YAML folders for the different formats, dialogue formats. So. As you know, we're going to write the dialogues first in YAML. I have already created here a dialogue0.yaml as an example. And if we open it, we can see that it's basically equal to the, to the construction that we used uh, earlier in our, in our example to teach you how the JSON and YAML work, uh, which basically only has you know, the speaker and then the line to deliver and then it goes linearly. So in order to convert this YAML into JSON, we're going for now use a website. So if you just Google uh, YAML to JSON converters, you'll find plenty of them. They are fast and they are pretty easy to use. So we're going to copy this here. We're going to this YAML to JSON converter, paste it on the left, convert it, and there you go. This is the JSON output from our YAML dialog. So now we just copy the output, go back to Unity, and here I have previously created a dialogue0.json file. We can open this, paste 
uh, sorry, paste our output, save, and there you go. That's all you need to do in terms of dialogue. So now going back to Unity, we are going to create our dialogue text, so our dialogue text box. We go here to create UI and text. When creating a text, it creates uh, a canvas immediately and places our text inside that canvas. So if we zoom out, we can see our canvas zero and our text box here at the bottom. So I'm going to move it to somewhere here where I believe it's going to be the black grass so that the dialogue can be above the black grass. I'm just going to make the dialogue box a little bit bigger, making the font a little bit larger and turning it white for it to be easy to be seen. And there you go. So this is our text box. So this is where we are going to print our dialogue. So now that we have our simple UI, we can go here to scripts, dialogue manager and create a new C sharp script. Let's call it dialogue manager. Let's open it. And there we go. Let's start doing some scripting. So first of all, we don't need these system collections, but we are going to need Unity engine.ui due to our texts. And also we are going to need to use, of course, litjson. The first thing that we need to do is to load the dialog. So let's create a function called load dialog that has an argument path so that we can load different dialogues depending on this argument here. And the way we do this with litjson is that, first of all, we need to import the JSON file as a simple text file. And we can do this with the following um, function, which is resources.load text asset. Uh, and now the path inside resources that I want to get. So basically this will go to, resource, uh, to, to resources slash dialogues slash path and import whatever there is, uh, whatever the file name is that I put in path to a text file. And now I can use a function, uh, a lead JSON function called JSON mapper dot to object. And then we're going to use it as the argument, the JSON text file that we just created. And this will basically map our text file as a JSON into Unity. Of course, we need to store this into a variable. So we are going to create a specific um, data type from the JSON, which is JSON data. We'll call it dialogue. And so dialogue can be equal to our JSON mapping. Okay, so there you go. Now, for example purposes, I'm just going to load the, um, the JSON file, our, our example dialog in, in, in start, in the start function. So load dialog and then inside the dialogs folder, there is scene zero, then JSON, and then the name of the, the file, which is dialog zero. So basically what I'm saying is that I'm going to use as a path scene zero, JSON, and then the name of the file, dialog zero. And that's it for now. So after loading, of course, we need to print the files, uh, sorry, print the dialogue. And for that, I'm going to create a print line function. And I need to specify where I want to print it. So I'm going to create a public variable of type text and call it text display. And here I will say that whatever is written inside the text display, which is text display doc text, is going to be equal to my first line. And as we've seen before, the first actual line of dialogue is stored inside dialog zero, zero. And now I need to convert this to string and there you go. Uh, of course, we don't want to print just a single line every time. So we need to increment the line each time we want to call print line. So I'm going to create here a variable 
that will store in which line we are. I'm going to call it index, so a private int index. Anytime that I will load the dialog, of course, I want to start in the first line. So I'm going to, every time that I load, set index to zero. Every time that I print a line, I want to increment index and I want to print dialog index zero. If you don't remember why it is dialog index zero, so why it's this, the first element that changes and not the second, please go back to the beginning of the video where I explain the way that LeetJSON maps a, a, YAML, a YAML file. Okay, so now we can simply call the print line function whenever we, for example, hit a certain key. So get key down. Oh, sorry, key code dot C. And here I will call the print line function. So basically, the first time that I hit the, the, um, the key C, it's going to print the first line with index zero. And then the next time that I press C, it's going to, to uh, print dialog one. So this, the, the second line and etc. etc. So now we can save, go back to Unity. There are no errors I s expect. Yes, everything seems to be fine. I need to create, of course, a game object. I will call it Dialog Manager. Dialog Manager and add Dialog Manager component. Okay, it requires as a public variable our text display and we can set which text box we want as our text display by dragging our text display into this slot here and now we should be ready to go so we can hit play. So there are no errors and nothing happened. So if I press C, there you go. The first line of dialogue appeared, great. And if I press C again, it will change to the next and C again and it changes and etc. So brilliant. So before finishing, I just want you to, I just want to show you how to get the key of a line, which in this case is the character's name or the speaker's name. And I don't know exactly why it is the way that it is, so I'm not going to go into much detail, but instead of just ac accessing, for example, dialog0.key, you have to do it with a for each, which is a little bit weird. So for each JSON data key in dialog index dot keys and then I will say that uh, a new variable for example called speaker so speaker is going to be equal to the key dot to string and since there is only one key in each element uh, speaker is going to be exactly the key that we want and now we can uh, Print it like this, so speaker plus this plus this. And just to make the code a little bit simpler, we can create a new JSON data variable called line that we're going to set equal to dialog index. So we can replace here by line and here by line and everything should be working smoothly. So let's get back to Unity. There are no errors, I assume. No, everything looks fine. Let's hit play. And there you go. Press C, it appears correctly. Peter, look Holly. Peter, I can speak. Holly, that's great, Peter, etc. Until, well, until it turns out to be an error and it just get stuck into this last line EOD EOD. Okay, so that's all for now. I hope that the pace hasn't been either too fast or too slow. So please leave a comment below and tell me what, what you thought. In the next video, we'll begin by making the printing end when an EOD is received, and then we'll associate the speaker to an actual in-game character so we can change the dialogue color or add a picture to the character, etc. We'll also create a dialogue trigger script so that we can um, create multiple instances of this dialogue trigger, each with different dialogues and ways for the dialogue to be initiated. 
For now, it all seems a little bit simple, but this foundation is extremely important to allow for more interesting things to happen in, in the future. Uh, please leave your comments below, like, subscribe, you know, every form of support is highly, highly appreciated. Have a wonderful week and see you next time. Ciao!